Ring 2008 on TSN is brought to you by the new Q Horsepower from Quaker State. Unleash all your horses. And Michelin, a better way forward. Without a doubt, the hot topic of conversation these days are the rising fuel prices. Well, we better get used to them. The silver lining, though, is that these high gas prices are forcing us to look into alternative fuels. Well, we here on Motoring believe that the answer today could be diesel. I mean, for one, we already have the infrastructure. Anyway, Mercedes-Benz is a company that has had diesel since day one, and it is now traveling the United States, its biggest market, talking to Americans to try and convince them of the advantages of using diesel. We joined this tour in the state of Vermont, who along with California has some of the toughest emission laws. The real driver in diesel fuel was the cleaning up of the diesel fuel in diesel vehicles, getting low sulfur fuel available right across North America, getting it down to 15 parts per million and below when it was at 500 parts per million just a few years ago. Europe has uh, been way ahead of us in terms of, of diesel development and the engines that you've got now are, are quiet, they're powerful, they're clean. Uh, frankly, you don't need to know anything about them, just get in and drive it. We are now in a situation that uh, we can show the world that uh, Bluetech is future oriented. We will meet with Bluetech the toughest emission regulation around the world, for example, in Fife in California. And on the other hand, uh, Bluetech is the most efficient combustion technology in the world and therefore clean with Bluetech. Now we are perfectly prepared for the challenges in the market. Well, the Bluetech is, a, is an added solution to the entire exhaust issue. It's a little bit of liquid which is uh, fed into the uh, after exhaust and uh, so that what you're getting out of the tailpipe is nothing more than uh, water vapor. That's pretty sweet. These vehicles are so clean at the tailpipe, it's even getting hard for us to measure. They're just so clean, but yet give the customer the uh, driving enjoyment that they're used to, and the fuel economy, up to 30% better fuel economy than the comparable vehicles that are running off of gasoline. The price of diesel is a mystery, and that seems to be more along the lines of uh, the speculation right now between the people that produce it and the refineries, and there's something going on that has nothing to do with reality, and hopefully that'll get blown over soon enough, because diesel, frankly, is cheaper to produce than gasoline. I think the Bluetech engines really present a, a really good alternative for SUV drivers in particular. These are vehicles that, that tow, that, uh, you know, that go long distances like me. I have a, a boat that I tow every summer. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. The, the, the next step is to bring the cost down. The only way to get the cost down, or at least one of the ways, is to get the volumes up. And that means derivatives of six-cylinder engines that become four-cylinder engines. And uh, that makes it more available to people who can't afford necessarily necessarily a Mercedes, and that's, that's the next step to go. Bill Craven is the General Manager of Regulatory Affairs for Mercedes-Benz in Washington. He is passionate about clean air, but he also believes that the auto industry is unfairly singled out when it comes to its role in CO2 emissions. It's not just diesel, but gasoline vehicles. Back in the 60s and 70s, we used to look at the tailpipe pollutants coming out and we measured them in thousands of kilograms per 100,000 kilometers. Today, we're talking about several kilograms per 100,000 miles. It's a remarkable difference. And now we're down to almost the levels that California calls zero emission. The particulate matter, the soot, the black stuff that diesels are, are so well known for in the past, the measurement is just a baby's breath away from what California considers a zero emission vehicle. That's those vehicles out here today. A baby's breath away from zero emission on particulate matter. Incredible. 
So why is diesel so clean these days? Because it's ultra low sulfur diesel. Gasoline engines are also built to run on clean gasoline, as in little or no sulfur. We're not there yet, and it's the sulfur that actually poisons the emission technology that's built into your engine. We need to clean up the fuel. We need the governments to get low sulfur and not put restrictions on the auto companies to say, clean up the vehicles, but not have the other piece of the puzzle and say, clean up the, the fuel that goes in the vehicles. You have to have both parts working together. We're seeing the future today. Diesel is a part of the portfolio of Mercedes-Benz along with hybrids, along with flex fuel vehicles, along with diesel hybrids, fuel cell vehicles, and electric vehicles are the end game. After all, let's keep in mind that the engines are durable, reliable. Look at Audi, won the 24-hour Le Mans in June running diesel engines, and I stood by that track in France and listened to those diesel engines go by, and you can barely hear them at 300 kilometers an hour. That's what those engines can do. Talk about diesel emissions. There's another emission that diesel truck drivers have to worry about. More later on Kenzie's Corner. Started life as one of the most recalled cars in automotive history. On this edition of Test Drive, the latest version of the Ford Focus. The launch of the latest Ford Focus brought a radical departure in the style department. Out went the box and in came a car with much more road presence. Some loved the look of the test car, others suggested it verged on garish because of the Jaguar-like fender gills. Remember, this is not a luxury car. No matter which side of the fence the critics came from, however, the praise for the interior was almost universal. The interior of this up-level Focus is very nicely finished. Leather seats, power everything, a moonroof, you name it, it's in here. The other thing that's in here is sync. Now this thing allows you to pair up to six phones and plug in an iPod and a USB stick and control the whole lot hands-free. Normally I'm not a fan of technology for technology's sake. In this case, I'm a huge fan of sync. The Focus SES also comes with the desired handling. It is light, tight and responsive to driver input. The SES's upsized 205 50R16 tyres make an appreciable difference as there's less understeer in a corner and better feedback from the steering. Likewise, the SES's front and rear anti-roll bars, the lesser models have a front bar only, make a big difference to the amount of body motion. As soon as the suspension takes a set, it rides out a corner with little drama. No, the SES is not a sports car, but it is competent for a compact family sedan. Whilst there's plenty of rear seat room back here in the Focus, there's one major drawback. There are no headrests whatsoever, not even in the outboard positions. Now, when I sit back here, the top of the seat lines up with my shoulder blades. That means that my neck and head are completely unrestrained. Now, in the event of a rear ender, I'm going to end up with a pretty severe headache. The headrest emission is odd for two reasons. First, the rest of the safety stuff, well, it's all in place. Second, front seat headrests are mandated by law. All passengers should be treated as equal regardless of where they end up sitting. Thankfully, anti-lock brakes are standard, as is traction control. Repeated stops measured 45 metres, which is OK, but far from class leading, the norm being closer to 40 metres. The back end of this Focus has been well thought through for the most part. 60-40 split folding rear seats and enough room for a family of four's luggage, in spite of the subwoofer in this particular car. These cantilever hinges, they also are much better than the old hockey stick style, which crush anything placed up against the side. However, when you close the deck lid, there's no handle. Every door deserves a handle, and if you consider the deck lid here to be the door to the trunk, it needs a handle. 
The Focus is two litre engine pushes 140 horsepower and 136 pound feet of torque. It is enough for most eventualities. The snap off the line is commendable and the mid range is pretty strong. Testing put the 0 to 100k time at 9.8 seconds and the 80 to 120 passing time at 7.6. Neither time sets one's heart a flutter, but they are, as I say, enough for most eventualities. The four speed automatic is best described as okay. The shifts are fast on the way up and the kick down comes with the needed alacrity. However, the focus would benefit from an extra gear. Five speeds are becoming the norm, even at this end of the price ladder. I enjoyed my time with this Ford Focus for the most part because it is a competent set of wheels. However, I just could not get over the lack of rear seat headrests. As such, I think of this vehicle as a two adult ride that just happens to have four doors. Michelin, a better way forward. It was invitation only at this year's Detroit Auto Show as General Motors hosted a gala event to introduce its full lineup for 2009. Kid Rock behind the microphone and Jeff Gordon behind the wheel, it was the debut of the Corvette ZR1. With 620 horsepower and almost 600 pound-feet of torque, the ZR1 is the fastest production car ever produced by GM. What many people may not know is that the tires on the ZR1 were designed and engineered specifically for that vehicle. The tire is called the Michelin Pilot Sport 2ZP, and Canadian racing icon Ron Fellows was closely involved in the tire's development. Ron Fellows, he's a, he's a great racer, and he, is, uh, he, he, was, he played a role in the development of these tires because we developed tires, we tested them internally at Michelin, and then we had Ron actually drive the tires we designed on the Road Atlanta racetrack and give us some feedback on what he thought and how it would feel for the, for the uh, end customer. What he brought to us was a confirmation that yes, the, what we learn in racing, we can bring it to a road tire. It's actually been kind of cool. Obviously the relationship between Michelin and Corvette uh, has been for uh, since 2004, the race program. So it's a natural that eventually um, Michelin would get an opportunity to, to be on, uh, to be the OE on, on one of the production Corvettes. And, and that's, uh, that's where they are with the ZR1 and, and also the C6RS. So the, the opportunity for me to, to do some of the, a uh, little bit of the track testing and Johnny O'Connell has done as well. Um, it's great fun. One thing about Corvettes is the Corvette owners tend to be huge enthusiasts and they go to events, they go to club events where they're doing autocrosses just like we're doing here today. That's when this tire is designed not only to allow you to, to go to the grocery store and, and pick up some groceries or go shopping or go on vacation, but you can also take it to the track or take it to a club event and, and find the, the tire to be very happy and, and make you happy as well. Michelin is very proud of this. It was a lot of hard work, and you know, a lot of the fellows I brought with me today to this uh, demonstration here, a lot of the guys that work in the plant, and they are super proud to meet Ron Fellows and shake his hand, and to know that their work, their handicraft, is getting all this attention. Is, you, I can't tell you how proud these guys are. Make sure you check out Motoring's brand new website. Miss an episode or segment on TSN? You can now watch it on the web. We also have a Car of the Year poll, photo gallery, the latest news, and much more. And it's all at MotoringTV.com. Okay, so we've heard from the auto scribes and the experts on the attributes of today's clean diesel. But you know, whether it's diesel, gasoline, or whatever, it always ends up in the repair shop at one time. So let's head to the Quaker State Garage and ask our Bill Gardner about his thoughts on diesel and its future. 
Well, Brad, I like diesel engines in certain vehicles. I mean, you know, I mentioned a few months ago in a motoring shoot about transmissions and how I felt that performance cars and sports cars should have a standard transmission. Well, with diesel engines, I feel they're best suited to vehicles like SUVs, pickups, vans, uh, full-size trucks, medium-duty trucks, they're great in those vehicles. Any vehicle where there's a lot of weight, towing or hauling involved, heavy-duty application, the diesel engine is probably the way to go. There's a huge advantage in fuel economy and typically a diesel engine will more than outlast the life of the vehicle. A gas engine in a highly stressed application, you might wear it out before the life of the vehicle. But you know, for light-duty vehicles, smaller vehicles like like economy cars and many, many uh, small cars. Nothing wrong with a gas engine. I mean, look at a Honda Civic. It'll give you 50 miles per gallon with that gas engine. Great performance and drivability, and it's a lively kind of engine. The gas engine revs up really quickly and gives you a very lively uh, engine performance. But when you get into trucks, huge advantage with diesel. Now, you talked about Mercedes and diesel engines, Brad. Here's an example of a vehicle that, that you can opt for a Mercedes turbo diesel engine. That's the Jeep Grand Cherokee. You can also get a Hemi, a gas V8 Hemi engine in the Grand Cherokee, 5.7 liter engine, or you can get the three liter turbo diesel Mercedes engine with the Bluetech technology. Now, the turbo diesel Mercedes in the Grand Cherokee gives 30% better fuel economy with almost the same amount of power as the Hemi. The zero to 60 times are very similar. And last summer I drove one on an extended road trip, a turbo diesel Grand Cherokee, 31 miles per gallon highway. And the only time you could tell that you had a diesel engine under the hood was under heavy acceleration. The rest of the time at part throttle cruise and highway speeds, just as quiet as a gas engine, just as smooth, just as good a drivability and 30% better fuel economy. And that's why in the Canadian marketplace, I'm told that right now the Grand Cherokee, 70% of buyers are opting for that turbo diesel engine. And with gas at $1.30 plus a litre, you can bet that diesel engine and 31 miles per gallon highway, which the gas engine can't achieve those numbers, that's probably why they're selling so many and they're going to continue to do that. Till next week, I'm Bill Gardner for Motoring 2008. Earlier in the program, Graham test drove the new Ford Focus. Initially though, he also planned to check out the new 2009 Ford F-150, especially after what he saw at the auto show in Detroit. Ford went all out, even bringing in country star Toby Keith. And why not? I mean, it's the 12th generation of a vehicle that has simply been the top selling truck and overall vehicle for over 30 years. But rising gas prices have spoiled the party. Good Sales morning, are down, everybody. and Ford and delayed its official introduction. Toby, but it was still talking proud here, in Detroit. The new 2009 Ford F-150, which is the F-150 is you know 25 percent of of our business, and more importantly to us, you know it's almost a million customers a year. So from business side, it's huge for us. But more importantly to that, for that is the customer side. We made a lot of improvements and make their life better. If you're in and out of a pickup truck bed for your job every day, having a sidestep or a tailgate step is a big deal. If you're towing and you have that $40,000 boat that you saved all your life for and it's behind you and there's wind or water and you have brake control or trailer control for sway, it's a big deal. So for us, these are big improvements to the customers. But Ford knows the pickup party is over, and like the other domestics, is looking to smaller cars, like the long-awaited Verve concept, first introduced in 2007. Right now, we're a full-line manufacturer. There's no way to build a profitable, sustainable Ford and be successful in customers' eyes until you offer it all. The Verve is a critical, significant car for us. A version of that we'll be bringing to, the, to all of North America in 2010. It is our future. It is where America's going in many ways. Uh, very soon, the small car market in America could be bigger than the full-size truck market. That is incredibly symbolic, and it is a perfect time for Ford to show its leadership globally in small car. Closed captioning of Motoring 2008 is brought to you by the totally new Chevrolet Malibu, 2008 North American Car of the Year.
At the Tokyo Motor Show a bunch of years ago, Isuzu showed a truck with some special features designed to handle conditions that drivers experience on the epic traffic jams on Japanese freeways. Among the features was a fold-down table out of the steering wheel hub, and that was designed that you could put your bento box lunch on there and eat your sushi while you're waiting for the traffic to clear. And underneath the steering column, there was another well, it was, it was a little trough, actually, and, and I kind of hope it was connected to a holding tank because, well, you're in the truck and, and you can't leave the truck and you don't want to stop every 20 minutes. And, well, that, that morning miso soup, well, it's got to go somewhere. Well, according to the trailer park boys, North American truck drivers do something similar, except they don't have the trough. They'll use a bottle, maybe a Snapple bottle or something, and they'll just sort of will turn the morning coffee into the bottle, but then they throw the bottle at the side of the road. We've got pictures of, look at this, this is disgusting. Guys, I understand you don't have to want to stop every 20 minutes. Time is money, you got to keep that big rig rolling. But can't you wait until the, the truck needs to be refueled? Can't you wait and carry that bottle into the washroom and dispose of it in kind of some kind of hygienic manner? I mean, please give some thought to the rest of us. I understand that a guy's got to do what a guy's got to do. But a guy's got to do what's right as well. I'm Jim Kenzie. You know, clean air and keeping those bottles off our highways that Jim was talking about really hits home when you travel to a place like this in beautiful New Brunswick. One final thought on diesel before we go. J.D. Power is forecasting that diesel will represent 15% of the American market by 2015. Well, Mercedes is telling us that it's already selling 25% diesel in its current M-Class lineup. So maybe the future is closer than we think. Now, if you're just joining this episode late, go to motoringtv.com. You can watch all the motoring episodes that you've missed, and pretty soon you'll be able to go back as far as 1988. That's it for now. We'll see you next time out as we continue to bring you more stories about cars and the people who drive them. The six cylinder is okay. The eight cylinder is stupendous. It really is. Uh, whether it's the right time for an eight cylinder car is another matter. Um, people who want that kind of car will always buy it. Really, this is a return to the performance game for Pontiac. This is a true rear wheel drive performance machine, and it's a car we've been looking for for a long time for Pontiac. I've been around a long time in General Motors, and it's uh, it's been a while since I've been pretty excited about one of our new vehicles, and this is absolutely it. Motoring 2008 on TSN has been brought to you by the new Q Horsepower from Quaker State. Unleash all your horses and Michelin, a better way forward.